Now I'll be the first to admit that I've been very critical of Mizuno tennis shoes over the last few years, especially after Tennis Magazine named the Wave Exceed Tour 4 the shoe of the year back in like 2020 or 2021, back when there were a lot of other really great tennis shoes. Then Mizuno came out with Wave Exceed Tour 5, which I thought was pretty similar to the Wave Exceed Tour 4, but just like every other toxic ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, yeah, we've all had them or we've all been one at one point, not gonna get into anybody's personal life here. However, just like that, you know, when Tennis Point USA sent me the Wave Enforce Tour, I just, you know, I had to get it on my foot. I had to see what they were about, especially because they look a lot different than other Mizuno shoes that I have tested recently. And oh man, am I glad I did. These things are awesome. Let's get into them. Now, starting off in the uppers, the Wave and Force Tour has had one of the best lockdowns of any shoe that I have tested, basketball, tennis, or otherwise. These have a true gusseted tongue. However, the gusset, or just the stitching that goes into the strobo board, is way far distal in the foot. So your forefoot locks into the shoe really well, but your rear foot has a little bit more play in there to get a little bit more of a comfortable fit. But what ends up happening is the lace line goes into this giant loop, which goes into a detached heel counter, which has this really thick padding and bunting around it. So when you cinch the laces down, you are cinching down this independent padded collar around your malleoli or your ankle bones. So you lock into the shoe so well. Plus, since the laces then go to the outermost layer of the uppers, it's also enveloping you from the outside, giving you this crazy vacuum seal around your foot. But also because the gusset, like I said, is so far forward in the shoe, you actually feel like you get a little bit more nimble movement out of them versus some other maximalist shoes. And what the uppers being a two level TPU and textile upper, as you can see on the lateral side, it is vented a little bit more. It's got TPU strands going through it. But then on the medial side, it's much more of a bulky textile layer with a giant slab of outsole tread coming up. You know, these definitely stay a little bit more secure versus some other shoes that give you that much feeling of freedom. And if you look at these uppers on the breathability test, they heated up 159.3 degrees, cooled down 75.2 degrees. Now, this is actually right in the middle of most other shoes in its class. It is better than some other tennis shoes, not as good as some other more minimalist shoes. However, for the profile you get of the shoe, the breathability of these, I actually think is pretty decent for kind of what you get out of them. And speaking of on the upper durability test, 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper, I did this on the junction of the thicker drag guard as well as the thinner drag guard. And on the thicker drag guard, it's not biting through to the first layer of the uppers. However, on the thinner one, it is. But, you know, with this giant slab of outsole tread here, as long as you're not an extreme toe dragger on the extreme distal side of your foot, I think you should be okay. I think the mud guard as well as the outsole tread should do you just fine. Now getting into the midsole teardown, these things are like a sneaker Easter egg hunt. They got just so much going on in here. Number one, you actually have a pretty thick EVA strobe board here, which Mizuno does on a lot of its shoes. But then you have a medium density foam right underneath your heel then a higher density foam, which is the white foam on the bottom side. Then you have a really thin shank that goes all the way from the mid part of the midfoot all the way here to the back of the heel. Now that goes under this super low density foam right underneath the heel as well as right underneath here at the ball of your foot to give you a little bit more forgiveness. Now what I like about this is you actually do get that harder density foam underneath the ball of your foot underneath of that really light density so that it doesn't bottom out too crazily. The one thing I will say is because it is exposed on the bottom of the shoe here you can actually see the red foam on the bottom. Um, if you don't want that to bottom out as quick I'd probably throw an orthotic in there. However if you look at the jump height test on these I got 21 centimeters of jump height on these and that's what they pretty thin shank in there. Just goes to show you that combination of foams in there does get some really efficient and kind of light of foot jumping out of this. If you look at the bounce height test on these, which I thought was even more interesting, got 34 centimeters in the heel and 38.5 centimeters in the forefoot. Just showing that that really light, that low density foam does get a little bit more pop versus some of the higher density foams. Like I said, it's going to bottom out a little bit quicker too, but because you have so many levels of foam in there, I actually do think you get a little bit more longevity longevity out of it as well as performance. It is really a comprehensive package. And like I said, I think if you throw an orthotic in there, then you can get the best of both worlds without some of the durability concerns. Now getting into the outsole tread of the Wave and Force Tour, probably my favorite part of these. When you put them on foot, it almost feels like you're standing on a carpet. 
And, and that's the kind of footwork they give you too. It's really fluid, efficient footwork. Almost like you're gliding on the court, like sliding on a really nice carpet court if you've played on those. What you get is a pretty thick, chunky herringbone on the lateral side of the shoe for digging in, as well as a flatter herringbone on the medial side of your foot. But what I like about the medial side is you have these undulations in the tread, so you get a little bit more fluid push off. I think that's maybe why I felt like I was like on a carpet on these, as well as just the sound these produce on a hard court is just very like ASMR. It, it's so nice to hear underfoot. These make just a very satisfying sound when you're moving side to side. Plus this giant air channel going through there it allows pretty efficient sliding on these. So I think no matter what kind of footwork you're bringing to the table, I think these do really well on a clay court because it is so flat under the ball of your foot. I, I, I would watch out or, or try to just watch out for the clay version of these that come out. I know this is out in Europe already. So if you want them on clay, I probably would just get the clay model. And looking at the speed ratio, the Wave Enforce Tours comes in at a 2.45, which to me is really great given how maximalist they feel, how locked in you feel to them. You know, the weight to bounce and kind of the weight to launch ratio of these, I think is really good compared to a lot of other shoes in their class. And even some shoes are a little bit lighter and a little bit more speed focused. And the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, and about a millimeter of damage on a two to four millimeter tread depth. This tread depth does get pretty thick. So I'd say if you are a slider, they're not gonna last you as long as the most hard rubber compounds we've seen. However, it's still pretty good with the durometer of 21.5. So as long as your footwork isn't super clunky and you are a little bit better balanced, I think they should last you just fine. Now, these do inflare pretty good. However, they do get pretty wide in the forefoot too. So I'd say a narrow, medium, and wide foot can just go to the size because the lockdown is really good. However, I would say if you are a really narrow foot, you may wanna consider going down a half size just to get that really great ankle lockdown in there. I think or you can just go up one half size. Uh, but in terms of the snake bitten foot, I, I think if you put an orthotic in these, they're good for pretty much everything. They are super forgiving just on their own. And I think, you know, ball foot pain, heel pain, tendonitis, I think you do do well just with the foam in general. However, if you want that to last over a long time in the shoe, over months and months and months, then I think you throw an orthotic in there and they become a pretty overall great shoe for really any snake bitten type foot. But getting into the all important playability and honestly, the very best part of the Wave and Force Tours. Those of you that have been watching this channel for a while, I need not say more than this. They are the reincarnation of the Adidas Soul Court Boost, but more forgiving and more agile. They have all the comfort factors of the Soul Court Boost and a lot of the playability characteristics of them. Super rugged, really secure on foot. They move really well for such a maximalist shoe. They grip, especially on hard courts, really well. But the Wave and Force Tours have one thing that they didn't, and that is a little bit of a better launch, a little bit more aerodynamics, a little bit better speed, a little bit better first step. They slide very well, but when you're sliding, because they allow a little bit more freedom of your foot, a little bit more flexibility, they allow a lot more creativity on court. I think these are kind of like the next best maximalist shoe, as well as next best tweener type shoe. And at least for me, I mean, I know I've had these for a while, I've held on to them for a while, I've played in them for a while, because my first initial playing in them, I was so blown away, I just didn't want maybe like beginner's luck in them to, to really influence me. But over time playing in these, I've realized that they just get better and better and better as you break them in. And you know, like I said, putting an orthotic in them too, just takes them to another level. So I think if you're looking kind of just for the ultimate package in a shoe, definitely the best shoe so far that I've put on. And there have been a lot of new shoes recently. Um, it, these are just out of this world. And by the way, yes, this is my new podcast chair I am checking out, kind of seeing camera angles for. If there's a podcast topic that you would like me to get into maybe a little bit of a longer discussion on, maybe something that lasts, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, make sure you drop a comment down below and just kind of let me know what you'd like to see. I do have some ideas, uh, but I would love to know kind of what, what the community would like to see as well. And of course, I'd love to hear your opinions on the Wave Enforced Tour. Are you looking to give these a try? Or are you a fan of the Wave Exceed Tour 4 and 5, the more minimalist setup? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see another sibling to the Wave Enforced Tour go under the knife, the New Balance Coco CG1, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.